You're watching Telecom TV from the 5G World event in London. And I'm joined now by Professor Rahim Tafazoli, who is the founder and director of the 5G Innovation Centre at the University of Surrey. Rahim, good to see you again on Telecom TV. It's been about two years since we visited the 5G IC Centre, just before its official opening. What's been the progress? How happy are you with what you've achieved at 5G IC? Well, it's been a very busy time. Uh, as you know, we formally opened the building in 2015, but the research started with the UK funding from 2012. Now, probably we can claim that we are the largest and the oldest open innovation center on 5G in the world. We have more than 26 global um, telecom players, car industry, broadcasters, and more than 55 small, medium-sized companies are working with our researchers. And uh, in addition to that, the volume of the work has increased substantially. Are you now at a stage where you can prototype and test these principles and technology in a real-world setting? Yes, we have developed all the technologies for high capacity, at 3.5 gigahertz and beamforming techniques and antenna design for 26 gigahertz. We've done extensive channel measurements at millimetric bands and 3.5, a small cell, large cell, and uh, new modulation schemes, new coding techniques, everything is in place. We are going to carry on with the same intensity our research but in parallel, we are implementing most of the techniques that uh, we have either published or we patented and it is novel and it would uh, meet the requirements, the challenging requirements of the 5G. We are testing them in the lab as well as on our uh, large-scale testbed in a real environment. And 2017 is a critical year for us. We want to put more resources into test, trial, optimization of the end-to-end -end of the 5G system. You mentioned the test bed you have at 5G IC. What exactly can you achieve on this test bed and how important is it to have such a facility? It is a complete carrier grade test bed uh, which is open enough to do advanced research and innovation. It has it started with LTE Advance, TDD mode, 2.6 gigahertz, 44 cells indoor and outdoor, and the core platform EPC, 4G core platform, together with the OSS system. So everything is complete, uh, is, uh, is at our disposal for the research and innovation. And we have change the core platform, uh, the EPC, to soft EPC, and now we have developed virtualized core platform, which is based on distributed cloud architecture, and we done, uh, carried out the testing end-to-end, -end network function, virtualization, software-defined networking, and we managed to do dynamic slicing on our testbed. On the radio side, we tested in the lab, is yet to go outside on the testbed, the massive MIMO technologies. And we have had uh, very good promising technologies for 5G. So how much of what you do at 5G IC feeds into the industry's standards process for 5G? which will eventually power the commercialization of 5G. The last two years, we set up within 5G IC uh, industrial membership, a subgroup, which is called standards subgroup, which is chaired by industry, and the members are our industrial partners. They go through our research that we carry out jointly with our industrial partners, and we identify which piece of research should go to standards and which group in the standards, which one should go to Etsy, 
which one goes to 3GP. We are also targeting IEEE standards for the next generation of Wi-Fi system. And we have had a huge number of contributions from uh, network architecture, flat distributed architecture, uh, virtualization, all the way to the transmitter and receiver detection for massive MIMO techniques. So which areas are you active in at the moment? Which are you most excited about? And also which areas still need a lot more fundamental research? We need to, we, there's, there has been a huge amount of work on enhanced mobile broadband aspects of the 5G. The real differentiator between 5G and previous generation system is ultra reliability, low latency and massive connectivity. And that area requires further research and further standardization before we assume that 5G is completely ready now. Rahim, thank you very much indeed. You're always welcome.